Yo, what's going on, everybody? Philly Insider here. We got uh, Drew, Hunter, and we got special guest Nathan, Nathan Ackerman from Philly's Nation. It's a pleasure to have him. I mean, I'm sure all of you know ex exactly who he is from his coverage with the team, and especially when they're out west, he's at the games and stuff. So that's that's really great content if you don't Love follow him, that. you know. Yeah, if you don't follow him already, go follow him. I mean, he's he's great. So anyways, um, good, good fellas win tonight, you know. Ranger Suarez, I mean, can't ask much more than that. I mean, that's exactly what you want to see. So, I mean, if you guys have any thoughts on that, love to hear it. Go for it, Nathan. Four sure. Yeah. I mean, I I, I kind of thought what the game was at 640 Eastern. I was kind of like, cool. They, they'll they play their game, probably win because it's the Rockies. And then we'll, we'll, we'll roll kind of right into the podcast. But Ranger Suarez, like, wanted to give us way more of a break. That was like – it was peak Ranger Suarez because it, there was no point – during that game when you're like, he's just completely overmatching guys. Cause that's not what he does, but it's like, you look up and it's the fifth inning an hour has passed and he's allowed two hits and no walks. And then like that holds for the rest of the game and he's thrown 105 pitches. So it, it almost feels like, and I don't like to be a spring training stats guy, but he had a zero earn run average in spring 193 or something in the postseason last year. Now he's down to 173 this year. And it just feels like we're going to, soon be at the point where we're not going to be talking about ranger as like a good number three even though that's like what he is i almost i'm not sure that if he was a number two he wouldn't be a good number two and almost like a low-end number one if he keeps on throwing this way so yeah it saves the bullpen which you know obviously helps especially in april um because it's a long season but yeah it was peak ranger stuff and i just feel like the the gap between how good he is and how much people talk about him on a national level, it's like that gap's going to close soon. Yeah, I mean, especially if he keeps doing stuff like he did tonight. I mean, that gets you all the national attention you could ever want, especially yeah. for a guy that doesn't get a lot. So, yeah, I don't, Hunter, you have any thoughts on that? And, and to that point, too, we talked about it before the season. Chris Sanchez was getting a lot more fantasy buzz than Ranger Suarez to start this year. And yeah. no disrespect to uh, Chris Sanchez, but – Ranger Suarez has been doing it for a couple of years now. And I feel like the end of last year, we talked about it. He just kind of felt ready for the playoffs in September and, you know, just kind of had a couple of throwaway starts. But once he gets into the playoffs and into the big moment or has a night like tonight where he's just on a, pitching on a really efficient pitch count the whole night, he just knows how to finish it off and how to go long out, go for long outings too. And I think he was, again, efficient tonight. He's just continually crafty every single outing out there. I think his changeup is – beautiful and we talk about Chris Sanchez change up a lot because it's one of the better pitches probably in baseball at times but Ranger Suarez this year I think that's been his pitch and his curveball plays really well too it played really well last year um and he just I mean he has what four to five pitches that all play really well maybe more than that so the guy was just like Nate said I think he said it best peak Ranger tonight we we've seen that Ranger before and I really have nothing else to say on that except I wasn't even surprised by that outing because that's just how what he is capable of at this point and also it's the Rockies and the Rockies are you know, That's the Rockies, but especially, I mean, with, with uh, Nola last night too, it's like, you want to, when you see a guy have an outing like that, like, um, you know, 7.2, one run, like, or 7.1, one run, like yesterday. And then a complete game, like the one you saw tonight, it's like, you want to do the, Oh, it's the Rockies. Like, yeah, he pitched well, but you know, is it really sustainable? But if you watch, I mean, obviously, all of us watch and you know a lot of people watch and it looks like they they even by the eye test it looks like they are throwing the ball super well the fastball commands great they're just you know they're using both sides of the plate uh the off speed stuff's moving and it's almost like if you were to throw that and have him with that exact same stuff that exact same command however he was throwing in these last two games and you put them against the Braves it's like yeah maybe he doesn't go the whole game maybe he allows more than one run but like no more than two or three they just they both look like they're you know, throwing super well. And I know we're going to talk later about the whole pitching side of things and how sustainable this is, but I've only got good things to say for now. I mean, they, it's just up and up and down the board. Obviously we know how, how dreadful the offense has been to watch too, but <laughs> if they're going to pitch like this, like they're going to win the world series. So, you know, yeah. Uh, but well, maybe, maybe they need to hit a little bit more, but yeah, right. it's, it's super encouraging stuff. And especially, you know, this is the only sample we have to go off of. It's April 16th, and all we've seen from pretty much everybody um, is pretty good. Yeah, and you're mostly – you're going to be in a great spot anytime whenever Nola has been your worst starting pitcher up yeah. until two days ago. Yeah. So, I mean, anytime he's your worst starting pitcher out the first three weeks of the season, I mean, you're, you're going to be winning ball games. And, unfortunately, the offense has cost them a lot of games. But, 
I mean, the pitching staff, I mean, you just can't ask anymore. And there's probably not a better rotation in baseball at this point. I mean, they're just so good. And the bullpen, I mean, same thing. I mean, I don't know if there's a better one. Right. And I, Nate, I do want to ask you on the rotation as well. Obviously, the Turnbull conversation is something that is somewhat polarizing. Maybe you could argue not polarizing because a lot of people are convinced after a couple starts that he is the guy. But I kind of want to get where you stand on the whole what happens when Walker comes back and what I, I guess it's a little less than a month at this point now. So I, I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I almost wonder. He had he had a rehab outing tonight. I think he threw four or five innings, like two or three runs, whatever. Um not a ton of strikeouts, but I don't I don't remember the exact line off the top of my head. But he was throwing 90.1, which um, in his final outing of spring training, he was throwing 90.0. So trending upward, but <laughs> it's almost like it almost feels like they're gonna like there's only so much they can do. Like when he's healthy, he's 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 healthy, and if this is what they're gonna get, like this is what they they'll get, and he is gonna be here for what this year plus two more. And, you know, there is the money side of things. Like when you pay a guy that, that much, it's like hard to hold him down. But I almost wonder if they sort of draw this thing out as long as, as they can and say like, look, you're health, you're healthy. Like you say, you feel good. And, you know, all of our, something's not translating when you get out there on the mound and you're throwing in the low nineties. I, I don't know if they're going to keep on just being like, Oh, he'll get back and the adrenaline will kick in and then he'll be throwing what 95. I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen. So if he doesn't get the velocity uptick, um, I, I, I just don't see them, you know, not doing everything they can to kick the can down the road as long as they possibly can. And whether that's until, even if it's not, you know, until he's throwing 93 or until he looks good, even if it's just until Spencer Turnbull kind of comes down to earth, which, Maybe it doesn't happen. I was big on the signing when it happened, and, and he looks pretty good so far. I know his last start wasn't his best outing of, of the season, but it just feels like something they, they, they're they saying, what, late April, early May, and I just – they're going to need him to throw harder. They're going to need him to look, you know, closer to a, like, fourth or fifth starter and not like the guy we saw, especially early in games last year, for them to just throw him right back into the fire, especially if Turnbull's throwing the way he – he is. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like you have to play politics a bit and be like when he's healthy and when he's back, you you, you kind of have to start him. And I don't think that they're going to go to a six man, um, not just because Zach Wheeler hates it, but <laughs> I, I, I kind of think it'll work. It's, it, it'll 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 work itself out. Like maybe maybe Turnbull comes crashing down. Um, hopefully that's that isn't it. But maybe you know, again, they just drag out this Walker thing as much as they possibly can. Cause I don't see another option. It's, 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 it's hard to buy into the, you know, best rotation in baseball now because it is, but it's almost like once they get back to full strength, does it take a step back, which feels terrible <laughs> to say, but it's just the reality of the situation. Yeah. And I mean, Turnbull's last outing, it was not like his first couple. I mean, he, he was a lot less sharp. I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but I don't remember. Was that a bad weather game that he pitched in? No, I don't believe I don't it was. I don't think it was either, but his stuff just, it wasn't as sharp. He wasn't as sharp in general. So, I mean, if he keeps regressing like that, I mean, it makes the decision a little easier for them, obviously. But yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. His stuff still was biting and stuff, but he just wasn't throwing strikes. So. Yeah. I wonder if when, if when Walker does come back, they sort of bring him into a piggyback kind of role, um, which will only exacerbate the first inning problems because last year it was like, <laughs> you can, you can kind of live with it if he allows four in the first, but four through five or six, if he allows four in the first and he only goes three or four, it's kind of like, you know, what are we really doing here? But maybe they're, they, they've got to find a way to keep everybody happy, and maybe that's how they do it. I guess they don't have to keep Turnbull happy, but if he's pitching well, they're going to want to keep, you know, the fans happy. Yeah, and he, he'd be a valuable piece to have in the bullpen as well, even if yeah. they, decide to go that, they decide to go that route. I mean, yeah. I don't know if Pinto has options or whatever, but – it probably wouldn't be much of a loss to just DFA him if that's what they have to do to put Turnbull in the bullpen. So, yeah, yeah. And as far as Turnbull goes too, like you said, Drew, he has that bullpen versatility as well, which I think is what people had hoped Taiwan could have done towards the back end of last season into the playoffs. But like you said, Nathan, I don't, I just really don't understand. I guess I'm not saying exactly what you said here, but just to that point, like I don't understand why that was even a conversation to have him start that playoff game when his velo was down in the first inning and he had a seven ERA in the first inning and his only playoff start in his career, he gave up four runs in the first inning. So 
I'm not really sure why that was such a big conversation come game four when we all expected that to kind of happen, but yeah, I don't know. Just I don't, I don't, I honestly, I don't buy it. I don't buy that it ever really was a conversation. I kind of think they knew that, that they weren't going to start him and they at least wanted to give him a little bit of an out of the branch, like, Hey, you can go out there and earn your spot. Oh, it just doesn't look quite good enough. And it didn't work because, you know, you know what happened on Twitter after the NLCS, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's also like, you know, a, Thinking about this from a playoff standpoint, too, it's like I, I I don't think that the fifth starter who, you know, throws once every five days in the regular season. And it's 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 a game that like even the best teams, you're going to lose more often than not. And then come the playoffs, like they're going to do the same thing again. He's not going to pitch unless it's in mop up. It's like this isn't the kind of thing that will sink their season. Um, it's and it can't be. I don't know. Like what 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 you can get out of the fifth starter spot is nice. Like what you know Bailey Falter did down the stretch in 2022. But you know if it's not as bad as what what Falter did to open the season in 2023, or it was just he got you know shelled every single time. If it's anything above that, it's like it's not going to kill you. It's just going to be really frustrating to watch every five days. Yeah, and I mean like you said it like you said earlier, it's going to kind of take a step back. It feels like whenever he comes back. But I mean right now it feels like. Every game they have a chance to win because the starting pitching has been so good. Yeah. And I hate to have that feeling go away just because one guy comes back and is now healthy. But, I mean, yeah. maybe he'll come back and he'll be fine. I mean, who knows, really. But there's yeah, uh, it's, such weird, it's such a weird thing to say. Like, he comes back yeah. healthy and then you feel like you don't have a chance. It's just such a weird sentence. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, on the on on you know they can win every game because of the, of the starting pitching, but they can also lose every game because of the offense. I mean, they're zero and four in Zach Wheeler starts, which is like, and I know his last one wasn't good. He gave up five runs. Well, it wasn't good from a you know the the final line score perspective. He you know got kind of screwed in the last inning there, but yeah, it's like you know they're gonna have to hit, and if they can hit like this team should be able to hit, then even the occasional you know four run four inning start, four run, five inning start, like they can, they can scrape by. But I mean, if you get the offense now and you pair it with like a league average fifth starter, which I think would be a best case kind of scenario, like they lose nine out, nine out of 10 of those games, if not more. So yeah, yeah they need to hit. Yeah. And that's good pivot to this question right here. I mean, are you, are you worried about the long, like the long-term slugging of the lineup and the run scoring? And if you are, which players are you specifically worried about? You want to go, Hunter? Sure, I, I'll go because I was an advocate for a potential Tommy Pham signing, even though I knew that was not going to happen. <laughs> but I was obviously a little upset when he signed a minor league deal for $3 million with the White Sox yesterday. So um, that being said, I'm not an anti-Rojas guy. I, I like the kid. I think he's unbelievable in center field. I think he has actually shown some improvement the past week at the plate. I think there have been some good signs there, and he's even gotten a couple bunts down this year too, which he was not able to do to save his life last season. So I am worried about him long-term, and even if there are short-term improvements, I still wonder long-term if he's going to be able to hit at a serviceable enough level to keep him up here. But at the end of the day, he is your nine hitter, so he's not one of the main guys I'm worried about. He's just one of the guys I'm going to mention on this question because I think it's just – you just have to. But – that being said, obviously, Castellanos is the first guy that comes to mind with the swing he had the other day. Even after the walk-off, you're hoping maybe he's going to carry some momentum from that. And then yesterday, we unfortunately get the bird's eye view of where that pitch was and how far out of the zone he faced after it. Um, you know, he I don't did, know. He did, he, did, he did check the swing, though, right? Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> barely. Barely. <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted so bad to swing at that pitch. And then the next yeah. one was like, you know, a couple inches further inside. And he's like, that's the one. And <laughs> Uh, Hunter, I know you were watching the uh, the Flyers tonight mostly, but uh, Johan laid down a really nice bunt tonight too, and uh, Gomber made an insane play to get him at first. I mean, yeah, <laughs> the only way he got him was throwing a bare hand. He wouldn't have had time to use the use like, his glove. What three three on the bunt count for Johan already this year? I believe maybe more than that, but they've yeah. all they've all hit the ground. That he hasn't popped them into the air. He's had a couple that he's popped up foul, but much better already from him. But those are the two guys that come to mind. I mean. I think Bohm hasn't made the hardest contact to start this year, but I feel yeah. like he kind of just is what he is at this point. And I think he's just going to, I think he'll get it. He, he's a guy who's hit the ball hard before. He's just not someone who's going to elevate it as much. So I think he will return to form, but I guess slight concern there. Um, but those are really the three guys I would mention. I, I feel good about a lot of the other guys. I feel like they've had their spurts where they've 
hit well. Uh, maybe not everyone, but I feel like they've all had bright spots here and there. It's just not been consistent. And lately it's just been nothing with runners in scoring position. You just got to come through in big moments. I don't care if you hit a 110 mile an hour exit velocity single with no one on base, and then you go down on three pitches with bases loaded and no outs, and then we get no runs in the inning. Like that's the stuff that can't happen. And the base running mistakes can't happen too. So those are just mental things that I think I got cleaned up from the lineup. Yeah. Yeah. I think on the Alec Bohm note, I'm like, I think my concern for him or, you know, my like worry level for him long-term is kind of, I don't know if worries the word because like you kind of, as you said, you kind of, what you see is what you have with him. Like he's, he's probably never going to be the 25, 30 home run guy, but I think I trust him more than quite literally everybody on the team with, you know, men on second, men, men on third, two men on second and third, or especially with two outs. Like it, it feels like he almost always gets the job done. And that's something that like, as not the one of the top three hitters on your team, like you can get away with being that kind of guy who's going to hit 330 in that, in that, in that role, not going to hit a ton of homers, but if you slot him in sixth, like, especially if you get the kind of power from JT that, you know, we kind of saw tonight, we've seen a, a couple of points this year in spring, you can, you can live with that. And I don't think he's going to be like a franchise cornerstone guy. He's not somebody that, you know, you empty the wallet for whenever he hits the free agent, but like, again, as a six hole guy, somebody who's going to more often than not get the job done and somebody who you trust in that spot. Although it was weird yesterday. He, he did pinch hit and, uh, had a chance to walk it off and didn't, but like, you know, off the bench, whatever, that's just a weird thing. It's like the one time out of 10, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's like, yeah. And it's not like he's going to hit 1000 in, in those spots. I think with Rojas, you're right. The at-bats have looked not good. They've looked, they've <laughs> improved in the last week, week and a half. And, and the bunts were encouraging, I guess. That was an awesome play that, that, that Gomber made, as you said, Drew, but um, yeah, Castellanos, man, it's uh <laughs> I don't even think I'm like worried about him anymore because I think I'm just out. Like if I was worried about him, it means, Ooh, I'm not sure he's good. Like maybe he might not be good in the long run at this point. It's, Oh, it does not look good. He's, you know, he's actually like kind of league average ish in exit velo and hard hit rate and everything else. He's like bottom 15th percentile he's chasing. He's it. And it doesn't like, I, I almost didn't believe that stat because I just, I can't remember that many balls this season that he's hit all that hard. And if they were, they were like straight in the air or straight into yeah. the ground. So, yeah, I mean, he's, um, I, I, I don't think we've seen them hit with him being, you know, this version of Castellanos. And again, if you're going to hit him seventh or eighth, like if you have, if you have Alec Bohm hitting sixth, Marsh hitting seventh, Castellanos eighth and Rojas ninth, you can you can get away with that as long as those you know last two guys in the lineup are not quite as bad as they've been thus far, which like it can't get much worse. I I'm gonna throw out one name that I don't think it's concern. I think it's just kind of like you'd like a little more impact, um, and that's Trey Turner. He is hitting 299 with a 768 o OPS this year, so like not bad by any means, um, you know, especially the average, but. It, it just seems like there's a few too many at bats and I know it's early and, you know, he kind of did the, well, he, he kind of started the season last year cold, but it was more than a start. It was like two thirds of the season. Um, it's just, there's, it feels like the, you know, there's been, it's been a little too low impact. Like the numbers aren't going to look terrible, but I don't know, maybe it's an intangible thing, but I just kind of feel like they're going to want a little bit more out of him, you know, $300 million. Um, I'm not concerned about him because maybe he's just a slow starter, um, but the defense is not good. And you're going to want a little bit more in terms of, you know, he's got one homer this year, no triples, four doubles. Like it's, it's been fine, but I think as, especially like, I think they can, this, this lineup can survive Castellanos being um, close to a, a black hole. I'm not sure they can survive Turner being, average or even just slightly above average. I think he's more important to the lineup and especially he's going to be here for math nine more years. So yeah, well, after this one, nine more years. So you kind of want to see a little bit more, but it's 17 games. We know he's, you know, still very good. I'm not like out on him. Just, yeah, you want to see a little bit more. Yeah. And sure. it seems like at the beginning of the season here, he's kind of lacked that, 
big spot hit. Like he hasn't had that big hit yet. Like, and that's probably why his impact feels like it's pretty minimal because yeah. he's been on base for other guys, but nobody's been on base for him because right. Schwarber's either been standing on first base, not in scoring position because he doesn't steal bases. <laughs> and I mean, speaking of that, I mean, Rojas, he's when he gets on base, he's like an automatic stolen base. He's like, he's not Esther Ruiz from the A's, but Ruiz is a lot more developed as a hitter, I think. But not I mean, according to the A's, but yeah, well, that's <laughs> but uh, I mean, he, he's kind of the same guy, like, he's almost an automatic stolen base when he's on base, and that's yeah. that's huge for the top of the lineup. And I think he's going to be a big part of it if they're going to score a ton of runs this year because Schwarber, I mean, he's going to hit 40 home runs, and if Rojas is on base for half of them, that's that's a lot of runs. I mean, yeah. that's great. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, two quick things. One on Boom, even if he doesn't get the runners in, he's probably moving moving him over too. He's going to probably make contact nine out of ten times. And again, last night he, I, I forget what I don't. I didn't actually look at the XB law on that. I felt like he hit it fairly hard, but obviously infield in there made a nice play. Um, you know, Pache makes a nice uh, has a really nice aggressive at bat the next next pitch and gets it done. But um, and then the other thing I wanted to ask too on the I don't know if, I'm sure you saw the tweet being on Philly's Twitter, Nathan, but. Uh, love Jack Fritz. No offense to him, but I did think the Trey center field idea was a little bit odd. <laughs> what was the ex- so it was it was Trey and center? Uh, let, let me look real quick. Let me look. Court, and then Sosa Merrifield at second. Something yeah. of that nature, I think. Um, yeah. Obviously, Roja, if it was it was Rojas, if he if he keeps struggling, is obviously not going to be in that spot. But yeah. yeah, it was interesting. Look, I don't think. Like in in practice, it's maybe they wouldn't do that. They want to keep Turner fresher than that, and they still want to see what they have out of Rojas. And you're basically just conceding the second base offensive, um, you know, spot. But like, is it that crazy to think just about the possibility that they might do that, even if it's just for like a month or so or a couple of weeks? Like, I don't know. I it's it's tough. Like, I don't think they would they would do it. But I I don't think he deserved quite the ratio that he got sure okay that's what i'll say <laughs> and, and also on that too um oh, i forgot what i was going to say on that i had something else to say oh yeah they put freddie gallus in center field at one point so yeah was, they wouldn't try that <laughs> yeah i i think that the honestly the biggest piece of that you know equation that's kind of missing is that whit merrifield doesn't look good yeah, and I'm just gonna if, say if you're that. gonna yeah if you're gonna move turner to center and have stott at short every day then um, it's, it's, it's going to be like a wit Sosa platoon and it's like yes. the, the like offensive upgrade you're getting out of that spot. You're, you're, you're downgrading that. Well, I mean, you're probably downgrading the defense. I guess you improve at short, but you get way worse in center you get worse at second. So it's like a, a moderate downgrade. And then the offense like doesn't improve all that much because of Merrifield and Sosa, especially if they're, you know, everyday guys. Um, well, Witt just might be cooked, and and Sosa, like as an everyday guy, might just get exposed. So yeah, uh, we think, saw that last year with with Sosa. He got yeah, exactly. Last year. Yeah, so I think that's that's honestly like the biggest missing piece of that. But on its face, if you got a little bit more offensively from those two guys, like you know, shout out to Jack. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, how many times have we seen Bryson Stott save a game from second base? I mean, right. He's yeah. just he's like a vacuum cleaner out there. I mean, yeah. I, I can't see ever moving him off a of second base because yeah. he didn't grade out as a great shortstop. I mean, he was like average. And as he gets older, he's probably only gonna get worse, obviously. So I mean, he's got a few years left, obviously, before he starts declining defensively. But you know, you're taking a massive downgrade at second base. You're taking a massive downgrade in center field, and you're getting slightly better at shortstop, like you said, Nathan. So I just and you're not really gaining gaining any offense because if you want to talk about black holes, I mean Whit Merrifield, that guy has been terrible. So uh, yeah, it hasn't it hasn't been hasn't been pretty. Yeah, he, he just the last couple of years he hasn't hit the ball hard. I no, I'm kind of slowly going out on him. I mean, I was kind of in when they signed him, regardless of the money. I mean, the money was too much in my opinion. But outside of that, his contact has been terrible. I mean, he's not putting up particularly competitive at bats. I mean, he had that one, I think he had like nine pitches or something, but other than that, it's just kind of felt hopeless for him. 
Yeah, and they they did they sit they sat in today against a lefty in favor of of Marsh starting against a lefty, which we all want to see every single day. Um, but I think it's like I I don't think it's just it, it it feels too coincidental that like oh he would get you know we would just now's the time when we're gonna play Marsh against lefties and it just happens to be Merrifield getting the day off like it to say I, he said it had didn't have anything to do with his you know pedestrian start I. I don't know if I really, really believe that. Yeah, and I mean, Marsh did not look good today against the lefty, so that's kind of discouraging a little bit. But, I mean, he had that incredible defensive play in left field. I don't know if you saw that or not, Hunter. I did, but yeah. that was a That was a hose. I mean, <laughs> there's no way what Merrifield's making that play. I mean, just straight up, just not happening. No. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you have Rojas out there for the full season, if he's able to do that, Marsh could win a gold glove in left field. And if you have Turner and Stott at short and second – Stott has a real shot to win a gold glove at second base as well. So you have two really po like possibly elite defenders out there. I mean, at least that's the way they've looked the past couple of years um, when they played those spots. You go back to Marsh in L.A. when he was playing for the Angels in left field. He was tremendous out there. Obviously, he had to play center field for us out of necessity because we had two guys in the corners who couldn't move. But, um, yeah. the I mean, the way those two guys have played defensively at their two respective positions has been really impressive to me. So I'm kind of still – I still think it's a little bit of a crazy idea, but yeah, if Rojas is really struggling and Witt does start to pick it up, I do think it's something you do consider for at least a little bit. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's completely outlandish as you said, Nathan. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy what we've come to because we just like ran through most of the field and we're like gold glove possibility there, gold glove possibility there. We just got done talking about the pitching staff, which so far has been the best in the sport, like the bullpen and the rotation. Um, you know, they've at least each been top two. Do you know where I'm I'm going to I'm going to throw some trivia at, at you guys. Do you know how many teams in the National League this year have scored fewer runs per game than the Philadelphia Phillies? Zero. They've scored 64 after tonight or 65. 65. I mean, yeah. The closest was, I believe, the Nationals. Yes, there. So the Nationals have scored one fewer run in one fewer game. The Cardinals are tied in both games and runs, and the Cardinals, That's I terrible. think, are cooked. So bad. let's yeah, see, fifty-five divided by eighteen, three point six runs per game. It's like we've even as recently as last year, or maybe twenty twenty-two. It was like the pitching's going to be, the starting rotation's going to be good good like especially the one two maybe some questions after three and the bullpen is going to be like Meh, we'll see but they're going to slug and they're going to out hit all, all those problems and now it's like the pitching and the defense are carrying the offense which is i i never thought we would get to that point or if we did it wouldn't be you know so soon after 2020 and 2021 2022 but that's where we are it's like so I was I didn't even realize yesterday until my friend brought it up. He was like, they're not even a top 14 offense in the National League. And I was like, no way. But they're not. <laughs> like they're no, tied to last. It's so, crazy. It's it's yeah. terrible. I mean, you're paying that lineup what, two hundred million dollars? I mean, <laughs> it, you gotta do better. I mean, just your yeah. guys that you're paying that much money, I mean, they they have to play better. And if they don't, then it's not on the manager. It's not on anybody. It's on those guys. At the end yeah. Of the day. Yeah. And I will say like Harper's been kind of unlucky this year. He's hit a lot of balls hard. The numbers don't really show it. Trey Turner, you know, I, maybe he's just a slow starter. I think he's better than this, at least higher impact than this, you know, talk to me in June about Kyle Schwarber mid June and we'll kind of reassess. Um, Brandon Marsh is like the best player in the world. And there's a few guys who, you know, start like, Stott's been okay. He's not hitting the ball hard, but he's not really somebody that, that you're concerned about because he always puts together a good at bat. It's just kind of the, and then, you know, we, we uh, talked about Alec Bohm with runners in scoring position, which like there's a role for that. Um, it's, it's, it's really just the Rojas Castellanos thing. And it's really just the Castellanos thing. So, you know, I and think it's like, better, but how much? Yeah. And it feels like the Castellanos and Rojas thing has really drug them down a lot because because of what Marsh was doing. I mean, yeah. Marsh was absolutely ridiculous, and he was sandwiched between those guys. Yeah. So there was basically automatically two outs whenever Marsh was on base. Yeah, And it just completely destroyed any ch chances we had at scoring runs, especially yeah. like yeah. 
because you know Schwarber comes up with two outs. I mean, he can hit a home run easily, but I mean, there's a good chance he's going to strike out too. So yeah, it's just. And it goes back to game seven last year when Castellanos has a chance to put three baseballs in play for a sack fly, doesn't do it. Uh, Marsh comes up, gets intentionally walked. Rojas is an easy out. So just like you said, Drew, he's sandwiched between two guys who are not, when they're not having any offensive production between them, it's a complete black hole down there. So it doesn't matter what Marsh is doing if that's going to be the case. Was that Castellanos at bat the same inning as the Rojas at bat? I've like blocked it out of my head, but it sounds right. Like, Yeah, I want to say it was. But- Regardless, I don't think Cassianos came through. Maybe it was a different Cassianos at bat, but I don't think he came through the at bat before March night inning either way. So, <laughs> but yeah. he definitely didn't because he only had the one hit in game one. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, on a different topic, I mean, we can talk about how bad the lineup's been for 10 hours, but right. I mean, one quick thing on that, too, just to Nathan's point, uh, it is nice to at least have the defensive side of it where you come from Reese Hoskins and Jeff Frank were playing the corner outfield to now where we are now. So, I just yeah, want yeah. to add that before. Although that big scary scoreboard out in right field, the like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that thing's spooky. Has yeah. all the metrics and stuff on it. <laughs> yeah. And the funny part about that is like you watch some of the plays in question and it's like he's going straight to his right. Like the scoreboard's not a qu- and he's like not reading it, the routes are bad. It's like <laughs> come on. I mean, to his to his, you know, I guess to his credit, it's it's hasn't looked as bad the past couple of weeks. So maybe he has gotten used to the scoreboard, but that was yeah. the kind of thing, like they were four and six or something. And it's like, or maybe they were two and four. I don't remember how, at what point of the season it was, but it's like, you just keep that in, in, in house, you know? Yeah. And I mean that, that out of town scoreboard now shows uh, exit velocities and anything over a hundred Castellanos probably gets scared of at this point because he, he'd probably, he don't even know he can hit the ball that hard at this point, but uh, on a, on a completely different note, how are you feeling about the uh, the division at this point with uh, the Strider injury and stuff? Oh, it's um, – I mean, the Braves are still the best team. I mean, that their their offense is just ridiculous. They're, like, doing basically what they did last year. I, I can pull up the – what were they last year? They were, like, a 800 eight, – 8-something eight OP – like, 8 mid-800s, 850 or something. Yeah, it's it's crazy. They're 857 now, so there's been no fall-off whatsoever. Um the Marlins are terrible. Every other team is pretty bad except for – like, look, obviously the Strider injury changes things. I I hate to think about it that way because you don't want to be like, oh, but this helps the Phillies. But, like, if we're looking at it from a baseball standpoint, like, you know, it kind of does. Obviously, you know, you want him out there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it should be a pretty good race up until the very end. Like, the Phillies – the Phillies kind of stumbling out of the gate. What I was kind of concerned about from their standpoint is, like, that you're not going to lose the East in April, but like, I think what's kind of hurt them the past couple of years is they've been playing from behind all season. Right. And that was kind of what it still is that because they're, you know, not in first place, but like they're a game and and a half out. The Braves are 10 and five, which is still very good. That's on pace to win like 108 games, but it feels like a few of these games here and there, the Braves have, have, have had a chance to really kind of, gain some separation. And, you know, when you're playing from three and a half, four back all season, we've seen that. Yeah. And I'm assuming the Braves have probably scored the most runs in the NL. I think we might've lost Nathan for a second. Yeah. We'll see if he comes back, right. but um, do you I guys have, I think you're back. Yeah. you're back now. Yep. We got you. Back. I don't know what just happened. That never. Okay. Anyway. Hey, that um, happens to me every, every stream. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what cut out, but the point is, Braves have had a chance to really separate. They haven't really done so, even though they're ten and five. I guess that's just a testament to the Phillies pitching, kind of keeping them in this. But it should yeah. be. This one feels like it should be an actual race until the end of the season. Which you know, yeah. if anything, even if they don't win it, that's at least fun. And I mean, Spencer Strider won twenty games last year, and they're not going to replace him with a guy that's going to win twenty games. Let's no. just be real. And, yeah. I mean, a lot of that probably does come from the lineup. Even on days he's bad, he still ends up getting the win if he gives up four runs. But, yeah. I mean, they're not going to replace him with anybody near what he's going to give them. And if they have one more starting pitching injury, they're in very, very deep trouble because they just don't have any depth. Yeah, and given a lot of their histories, you know, you hope yeah. not. Chris Sale, Chris Sale. I mean, you know that guy's not going to pitch 32 games. There's just mm-hmm. no way. Yeah, so. It would be a shocker. Yeah. Trying to, and then I guess we can pivot to this since we wanted to talk about this as well. Can our pitching staff keep this up for the full duration of the season? 
I mean, I, I think it's a possibility. I don't know about this level right now. They're pitching right. at a pretty high level, but right. like rel- relatively close to it. Um, sure. I mean, again, they have a very well-rounded pitching staff. We've talked about this before, Drew. It's not like you're going to have, I don't think the national media, not maybe not the media, but the national fans so much are going to talk about it. They're going to think of the Phillies as one of the best rotations in baseball because a lot of people probably don't think Nola's a great number two, even though we've seen in the playoffs what he can do. But then you think about Ranger Suarez and Chris Sanchez. Those aren't guys on the national radar as much as other guys, except for maybe fantasy purposes. But we all know from a Phillies perspective, we all know what they can do and how well-rounded that rotation is. And then if you have Turnbull pitching as well as he is right now, oh my gosh, I mean, that is unbelievable. And then you go to the bullpen and you have multiple guys who can pitch in high leverage spots. I mean, I feel very confident about each and every one of them, even Marte and his role. I think he's fine. You know, I, I still don't know if he's a seventh, eighth, ninth inning guy consistently, but I think there will be times where he's going to have to do that in the regular season and we'll see how he does. And I think he's been better to start this year. I think the splitter has helped him. It's, it's, Definitely helped him to have a pitch versus left-handed hitters this year. And that's what he's, he's our deaf guy we're talking about. So I'm not even yeah. talking about the high leverage guys we have in Alvarado, Hoffman, and Sir Anthony. Sir Anthony hasn't been quite himself this year, but then you go to Strom. Even Soto has looked better. He's still been a little shaky at times, but I think the bullpen is very well-rounded too. I'd like to, if they're going to save some powder for the deadline, like they said, and use it for someone at the deadline, I'd love to see them add someone at the deadline who's just a solidified high leverage guy. Like you're not going to touch me in the playoffs type of arm. I don't know who that is. I don't know how feasible it is to get one of those guys as our farm is still developing right now. And I like our farm a lot, but obviously you want to be smart with what you give away. And I saw some ridiculous mock trades this off season for closers. So I don't want to go down that road, but point being, I feel like they're really well-rounded and Drew, you said in our chat the other day, even if they didn't add a guy at the deadline, I'd still feel very good about this bullpen. Very, very good. So I feel great about the rotation of bullpen. I think they're going to have their bumps in the road over 162 like any staff does. But when we get to the playoffs, I feel very confident they're going to lock it down. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. And uh, I mean, I think Soto and Marte are our are, are last two guys out of the bullpen as far as one inning guys go. And mm-hmm. there's probably zero other bullpens that have guys like that coming out. <laughs> We're on 100 <laughs> as the last guys out of the bullpen with the least amount of trust. So, I mean... That just kind of tells you where they're at. But, I mean, they could obviously use another arm. I mean, and any bullpen can. But, I mean, you're not going to give up premium prospects to get no nope. closer whenever you have guys that we have. Yeah, I think the pitching staff can keep not this up because this is, you know, kind of – Right. You can't right. do this for a full season. But um, if you look at the starting rotation, like Zach Wheeler, Zach Wheeler, kind of all you have to say – Nola looks really good. I mean, the first start against the Braves was not not great. And the three offenses he's faced since were the Nationals, the Cardinals, and the Rockies. And I know I just said, like, oh, you know, he still looks very good. But, you know, maybe you put a little bit of stock into that. He didn't look all that great against the Nationals and especially the Cardinals. But Or maybe it was the Cardinals, especially the Nationals. But, I mean, the numbers right now look very good. Rangers obviously doing incredible stuff. Um, Christopher Sanchez as the number four. Anthony said here in the comments, I'm glad nobody's saying that he should be uh, removed from the rotation. And I agree. He seems like a mainstay. It's like if anybody's going to get kicked out when Taiwan Walker comes back, it's not going to be Christopher Sanchez. It's going to be obviously Spencer Turnbull. Um, and in the bullpen, it's like you wonder if they can keep this up. But like they all the stuff is there. Like yeah, there's yeah. there's. There's a conversation, you know, there's plenty of room for conversation in this, you know, climate about whether, you know, throwing 100 is the most sustainable way to build a team or a career, I guess. But like for the short term, at least for this year, and and most of the problems that we've seen in that regard have been on the starting pitching side. It hasn't seemed to affect the relievers as much, or maybe I'm just saying that because the big names are going down and those are often starters. But I agree. Like, Hoffman, nasty stuff. Alvarado looks awesome. Uh, Sir Anthony looks very good. He had that one, you know, tough outing against, I forget who a few days ago, but, um, you know, overall this year, he's looked very good. Junior Marte, amazing. Like, has he allowed a run yet? I know as of a few days ago, he, he had one. He did. He did. He did one. Um, and then like you're, as, as you guys said, your fifth, sixth and, you know, after guys in the bullpen are still, you know, an average team's maybe three, four, five, or two, three, four. So yeah. the stuff's all there. They're all throwing upper 90s or 100. Um, they There doesn't seem to be much, like, um, 
you know, they, they all seem pretty adaptable. Like a lot of these guys can close and have gotten the job done there. I know Hoffman had that rough outing against the Cardinals, but then he got a save a few days later. So, um, you know, I, it's like, it doesn't feel like it's a fluke. It feels like everybody has nasty stuff and what you've seen right now has just been a byproduct of that. So assuming that that continues and they all stay, you know, relatively healthy, I don't see why they can't keep it up. Can I, can I just, I was, I was scrolling through fan graphs uh, just to see where, you know, they stack up in terms of uh, the bullpens in the sport. They have the fifth highest bullpen ERA in all of baseball. Now, obviously <laughs> because of a few blow up outings against the Braves to start the season and those will kind of tank your numbers. Um, but like, they're fifth, they're 25th in bullpen ERA and eighth in in war. So like <laughs> it just kind of goes to show if you didn't have those few blow up outings, like they would be top to one, two, three in the sport in terms of war, in terms of ERA, all those things. So yeah, they look they look they, they look very good, and I don't see any reason why it's gonna stop. Yeah. Right. And does that take into account guys that are not on the roster anymore? The war? That's a very good point. <laughs> I, I think Brogdon has like negative one war yes. or something. It's something yeah. crazy. And the first two games of the season were probably like half of the runs that they've allowed all season. So, yeah, yeah I mean, there you go. Other than that, um, it's they, – They're the best. I mean, there's yeah. really no, no question about it. I mean, Yeah, and there was that – they were ranked by fan graphs and MLB wrote, you know, something about it at the start of the season, like projecting the best pens in the sport. And they were number one because they had the highest uh, F4 projection. And it's like, you know – it's it felt crazy to read that in the moment and then the first two games it just looked like <laughs> one of those old exposed things but then you look up 20 18 games 18 games in and it's like yeah maybe they are one of the best or yep. the best yeah and sure. i mean you talked about you talked about all those guys and you didn't even talk about the best guy that has started the season matt strom i mean there you go. he, he yeah. is so good man so good. Mean, yeah I, and, I don't really there's really nothing to say. He doesn't walk guys. I mean, he just attacks guys and he gets out lefties and righties. He's he's right. all purpose. No runs since opening day, I don't believe for him. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. And, and and he's what? Like if if you were to rank how much you trust each guy in the pen, he's he's four. fourth. Like right. exactly. probably behind Alvarado, Hoffman. I mean Kirk you could, yeah, Kirk yeah, Kirk rings I and then you get Kirk. Yeah, yeah, you didn't even say about him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you could you could put those three plus Sir Anthony, you know, depending on what you get on any given night out of him. And, like, Marte looks really good, too. You could put him sixth. It's Maybe crazy. It would probably be more like third or fourth, but it just goes to show they have, you know, a lot of options there. And yeah. if Turnbull's in there in a couple of weeks, maybe it hurts the rotation, but it makes the bullpen that much better. Maybe we lost Hunter. Oh, there he is. Never mind. I'm good. Camera yeah. cut out for a second. If you add Turnbull back to that red or that bullpen, man, I mean, oh, oh my gosh. gosh, that is his, that is just dirty work. That's not even the true mop up guy because I think he can come in and pitch in a decent spot for you. You don't even need him to, but yeah, I mean, if you're down guys and you really have no one available, he can pitch a, a spot for you that's a little more important than you might usually ask him to. And now that I kind of thought about it a little bit, like just in the last minute or two, they probably want to put um, Turnbull in the bullpen because they want to protect them a little bit from himself because he hasn't pitched a ton of innings the last couple of years. And I'm assuming that's a big concern of theirs. So I think that's probably going to be something they, they're they going to do no matter what. I mean, they're obviously not removing anybody else from the, the rotation. So, but yeah. I mean, that that's probably just one more reason for them to do what they're going to do. Yeah. It was kind of like what happened with Strom last year when he opened the season as right. like the best starter mm-hmm. and everyone was like, keep him in the rotation. And pretty much yep. the whole time they were like, we'd love to, we can't. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he he did fall apart a little bit at some point there, and they kind of shut him down, yeah. and then he came back and he was fine. But, I mean, you don't want to take that risk with guys every single year. I mean, last year it was out of necessity, kind of like us playing Marsh in center field when we traded for him. But, I mean, yeah, you, you don't want to, like, risk guys' health for your own benefit because those guys are going to help you in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have anything to add on that. Should we get All to right. some of the comments here? I think, I think we, we should, yeah. All There's right. usually some pretty good ones. Usually some yeah. pretty good ones. Yeah. You guys shout out, shout out Anthony for hopping in, too. We appreciate it, man. Good uh, good coverage on Twitter from him as well, Yep, uh, as always. But uh, Sully mentions on the lineup, ton of weak ground outs, which is not ideal, but the bombs are allowing us to win that way. I'd like to see more consistency, but I think that's just how we're built, and that's okay. Yeah, I mean, that is 
Yeah. Pretty much that sums up how the lineup is built at this point. Um, that's kind of why Whit Merrifield was brought in here to bring a little balance when he was in the lineup with the contact. But if it's going to be chasing out of the zone to get that contact or weak contact, I guess it's not really going to balance it out. But yeah, point being, uh, it really has been, it feels very bomber bust over the last couple of years. And it does feel like Schwarber has changed that approach to an extent, at least to start this season and at least hopefully eliminate a little bit of that slow starting. Um, obviously the numbers haven't necessarily shown that quite yet, but we've seen it so far. I think the approach has been different with him. Yeah. You, it was almost like you watched him last year and it's like, how can a baseball player get this weird? And then you see him this year and he's like hitting singles and trying to steal bases. And that looks even weirder because it's Kyle Schwarber. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, he's hitting 231. Like I, yeah. I mean, anyway. he's very, very, very noticeably moving better than he was last year. I mean, yes. it's like night and day. I mean, I bet his sprint speed is up like two two feet per second. I mean, it's <laughs> it's got to be ridiculous because last year he, I think he had a bum knee pretty much all year, and he was stuck playing the outfield. So that was uh, that was pretty brutal for us. I did check the Savant slider just to see, expecting to see like maybe a tenth percentile sprint speed. It was fourth. So like he's still not a you know he's not fast. <laughs> he's not fast. But what was it last year? I, I can't imagine it was any higher than like second. So it definitely <laughs> looks and just the eye test too. It looks it looks a lot a lot better. And he doesn't have to play left field at all. He did for a part of last year. So yeah, yeah, both, both higher percentile marks than his uh, outs above average. So there's that. Yes. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I also wanted to get to this too on the Walker topic. Anthony mentions I wonder if he brings back his sweeper. Uh, a friend made a decent point about how it was a pretty good pitch when he used it. Yeah, if he's going to have the low velocity, I mean anything like that could definitely help his arsenal. Yeah. And I remember last year, uh, you know, about a month or two, two and a half months into the season, their approach kind of changed and they were just like, you're going to throw a splitter 50% of the time. <laughs> and like, there were some outings where it worked. And then, but you know, if you look back on the end of the season, then it's like, eh. although the numbers themselves weren't that terrible, it was just yeah. kind of like the experience of watching him was a lot worse. And then obviously this spring and, uh, you know, his rehab start, I guess the, the eye test and the numbers test haven't really passed, but yeah, I mean, whatever tinkering they can do, um, it did look – I do remember it being, you know, looking like a pretty good pitch when he threw it. So they got to do something. That's that's all I'll say. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, I've said this a couple times on the pod this offseason and leading up to now, but, I mean, he pitched like 177 innings last year. I mean, there is value in that. I mean, because outside of the first inning, he was honestly a good pitcher, really. I mean, he was. That's just the reality of it. But, I mean, the first inning still counts. I mean, that's not not <laughs> discounting the fact that he sucks in the first inning. But I said – I think I said once or twice, I think he probably would have thrown 200 innings last year if he wouldn't have blown up in the first inning, like pretty much every start because it probably cost him an inning every single start. 15 yeah. wins. He won 15 that's, wins. That is, that is <laughs> insane. Oh, my gosh. I still can't believe that happened, but – yeah. We had to hear that all off season when there was the campaign for Taiwan to still have started that game four months later, but it is what it is. I'm still, I'm still stuck on that. If you can't tell Nathan, but um, not, not even that he didn't start it, the conversation around it, but from the, fan base. Know, I was thinking about this the other day, this is a total, total tangent, but since you brought up game four, do you remember the Christopher Sanchez comebacker when, he yeah, when he did, out? he didn't yeah. know how many outs were. Yeah. Nobody talks about that play. And I only thought of it because in his last start, there was a, a comebacker that was like not that tough of a play and he botched it and then like re bobbled it and then threw it wide. And I was like, oh, that reminds me of a different Chris Rich, Christopher Sanchez comeback. Like, <laughs> he talks about that play. That was one of the plays. Like, if they, I think if that doesn't happen, they probably win the series. Win the game. Yeah. They, it's, they it lose changed the momentum. Yeah. They lost that game by one. They scored a run there. Um, and maybe the, the, the bullpen and the Kimbrel was out of state at that point in the season where like no lead was going to be enough unless it was six plus runs. But anyway, total tangent doesn't matter anymore. It's over. Yeah. He yeah. also maybe goes another batter or two. And yeah. Maybe we save an inning or two from the bullpen and maybe Kimbrel's not even facing Alec Thomas there, but yeah. And I, I don't even think I said this in the last pod when we talked about that game that he pitched in the city connects whenever he botched that comebacker. But I mean, he costed himself. I mean, he was pitching really well. And then yeah. that happened, and it just kind of crumbled. Like, it all fell apart for him after that. And it, it cost him a ton of pitches. I mean, that was the main thing. But, I mean, it seemed like that just kind of killed his momentum that night. Yeah. 
Look at us. The Phillies are finally two games over 500, and we, we go back to game four of the NLCS. <laughs> yeah, look at us go. Look at us go. It's a snowball effect. I mean, look at what happened with Wheeler the other day. Boom has the error to start that inning, and then a wall scraper makes it 6-2 to two out of nowhere. Blink of an eye. Yeah. yeah. Nathan, I know you said you might have to go around 11-15, so if you need to check out at any point, don't, don't have oh, I got a, I got a few more minutes. All right. Sounds good. Cool. We got a few Ranger comments here on that note. It's a little more positive than the Chris Sanchez Discord. We still love them, but um, I see him Ranger go full game, solid win. Ranger looked nasty tonight, um, and Ranger gave the bullpen rest. All stuff we already talked about a little bit, but again, just more appreciation for a guy who very much deserves it. I mean, I remember in 2021, I think he had what a sub one five ERA. He had maybe over five saves or something on the season. And then I want to say he had like seven quality starts or something like that. It was something ridiculous where it's like, how many guys have even done this before where they've pitched in that closer role and pitched as a, a starter and gotten stretched out mid season as a starter and then done what he did. And then now he comes back in 2022 as obviously had some injury issues over the past couple of years, but comes back in 2022, still getting stretched out has a really strong season there last year has another really solid season followed up by another great postseason, And now this year, Finally stretched out, finally healthy going into the season, and it feels like we're seeing him at his full potential. And I just love the love to see him at his peak, especially the World Baseball Classic injury last year was really, really unfortunate. But now it feels like he's finally got a full season ahead of him, and hopefully he stays healthy, knock on wood. But uh, it's really cool to see what he's doing right now. Yeah, I mean, he's whenever he's stayed healthy for extended periods of time, he's been a special pitcher. I mean, he's so good. I mean, there's there's very few pitchers in the league nowadays that pitch like he does. They're, they're crafty. They don't throw hard. I mean, Nola's one of them, but, but Nola's more kind of a strikeout pitcher than he is a ground sure. ball pitcher, I would guess you would say. But, I mean, yeah, Rangers, he's one of the best ground ball pitchers there is in the game. There's just no question about it. But uh, kind of another another note from tonight, Bryce got out of his slump. You know, that's absolutely massive. I mean, he's been so close, it felt like, for the last week. And he's been hitting so many balls hard, but they're like right at guys or they're just line drive lasers and the outfielders are getting to him. Yeah. Yeah, there was never any concern with him. I mean, I'm speaking no. to myself, I guess. But no, I, I, yeah. he, was, he was hitting the ball hard. It's the back stuff. You know, there was some of it in spring, and then when he started off kind of slow in the regular season, it was kind of like, is this going to be a nagging thing? Well, the answer is it has been a nagging thing, and it always will be a nagging thing. And, yeah. like, it's been a nagging thing in his first five years with the Phillies, but like, would you change anything about those first five years? Yeah. Maybe you not have him get Tommy John, but it's, it's just one of those things where every couple months or so, maybe every month, like you need to give him a couple days and you know, he's just going to be it, like, it's, it, yeah, it's, manage it, it's like, you know, I don't, it's, it's just going to be something that, that they're going to have to find a way to live with. And it seems like they know when to push it and when to, when to ease up. Um, so it's like, yeah, they, you you got to get used to it because it, it's it doesn't need to sink him, and I yeah. I don't think it will. Yeah, and it's it's like you said, it's kind of going to be chronic for him. I mean, it's it's always going to be there. So, yeah. but uh, I kind of chuckled tonight whenever he came up to the plate in his first at bat with Nick Castellanos' bat, like as if there's any magic in that thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, maybe yeah. trying to get some magic into it for Nick. But I mean, he came up in the second and third at bat, and he he had a couple lasers, so that was really nice. Speaking of, do you guys know the only game that the Phillies have put up over five runs this year? The uh, Bryce Harper three home, three home run game? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that – I mean, that goes back to the point <laughs> about the run scored per game and also Harper getting out of a slump. It's just two things that haven't happened very often this year, unfortunately, but specifically the offense as a whole. Is yeah. that – you said the only game where they've scored more than five runs this year? I just checked that on the schedule because I was I was gonna say the last time they scored more than five runs, and then I was like, you know what? Let me check the games before that, and yeah, only game they've scored more than five this year. That's embarrassing. This is a yeah. generational pitching staff. Yeah, <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, there's only one qualified hitter in the entire league that doesn't have an extra base hit, and I'm sure you both know who it is. Yeah, I have, I have a guess. Yeah. You, you, I mean, Nick Castellanos. I mean, you you just oh, got to get more. Yeah, you got to get more out of Nick. I mean, there's just no way around it. I mean, they will get more out of Nick. I mean, there's really no question that he's going to – he's not going to hit 170. Let's yeah. just be real. But if he hits 250 and drives in 85 runs, I mean, that's – you take that because he's probably going to hit 25 homers. I mean, he'll get hot and he'll hit six home runs in a five-game stretch, you know. He'll do that a couple times throughout the year. But, I mean yeah. – Whenever he's cold, you need to get something out of him. 
and right now they're just not. I saw somebody the other day tweet out a poll on Twitter. I think it was I think it was Ben Silver. Yeah, it was Ben Silver. And it was if somebody told you right now that Castellanos would end the season with 22 home runs and a 755 OPS, would you take it? 32% of respondents, almost a third of the people who voted in this poll said no. <laughs> what are you hoping for at this point? Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure 22 and 755. Like, if you told me 18 and 730, would you take that? I'm not sure I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, what he's been now, absolutely you take it. But yeah. comparing him to last year, I think you hold him to a little bit higher standard than that. But, I mean, given his slow start, I mean, I think you can lower the expectations a little bit for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. 32% of 181 votes. I just checked. That's <laughs> that's that's a lot of votes. Yeah. Was, like floored when I saw that. I thought it was going to be a 90% yes rate. But yeah. Yeah. Speaking of uh, past performances versus now, how about this guy right here, Alec Bohm at third base? I mean, what a revelation. I mean, <laughs> it's been kind of insane what he's done because, I mean, he went from being probably the worst third baseman in baseball to being average maybe above average on some nights i mean yeah. it, it's just crazy the work he put in i mean you got to respect it for sure bobby yeah. dickerson man working magic on the infield yeah. yeah the other day was the two-year anniversary of the you know i believe being hate this place game yeah <laughs> which my my claim to fame i've been to the bank five times in my life that was the fifth and most recent time that i was there <laughs> that's um, crazy I, I was like sitting in the stand and i like pulled out my phone and everybody's like did he say that i'm like no way um, but that, yeah, I mean, then two years later to the day he made two, I think he made, you know, pretty two, two pretty, um, impressive plays. And I just thought back, I was like, there's no way he makes those plays in 2022 or even, you know, at the start of 2023. So yeah, yeah it's like, it's almost, is it, would you say it's average? Like, would you I, say it's average defense at, at third? Let me look at his at, savant really at quick. Best, probably. I, I would, yeah. I would probably say a little below average just because there's probably some where he dives or he doesn't get to that other guys would get to. His yeah. length makes up for it, though. I, yeah. Regardless, it's way better than it was, obviously. Oh, it's like it's more than passable. It's yeah. more than passable. Alec yep. Bohm is a positive outs above average fielder in 2024. Let's go. One, one, out, one out above average, 77th yeah. percentile. Wow. Man, that's like that's good. I mean, that is really good. That's yeah. genuinely a good player. I mean, yeah. right? and I mean times like this. Yeah, and especially with the rotation that they have, Ranger, you know, pitches to contact a lot. Yeah, uh, and he saved him the night. And the splitter now, which, um, all, I mean, all those guys are, you know, pretty much ground ball guys. And yeah. to have a gold glover there over at third, it's for, you know, helps 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 you out a lot. Yeah. Don't forget when he outdueled Ar Nolan Arenado in the playoffs yes. in 2022. Yeah. That yeah. was and quite the Cardinal, show. In the Cardinal series, too, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just recently. Yeah, he, I remember he robbed Arenado of an extra base hit. I, yeah, I, I was at that game. game. I was sitting on the third baseline for that one. Yeah. Awesome play. I, I think he like saved it from going right down the line and threw him out at first. It was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's been incredible. I, I love what he's doing in the field right now. Yeah, yeah. arms good too. And uh, kind of just getting your opinion on this, but I mean, do you think Johan Rojas wins a platinum glove if he plays center field for a full season this year? Yes. I mean, if I had to go Rojas or the field, I'd probably take the field. But if I'm picking one individual specific guy, nobody jumps out as an obvious. Yeah, I'm sure. Why not? Yeah, it... I mean, Fernando Tatis is a great right fielder, but yeah. he's 99% because of his arm. I mean, he, he has a total cannon out there. But, I mean, Johan, just the balls he gets to in the gap, it's just – there's no other center fielder that's getting to those. There's just, yeah. there's just not. There's no effort. Like he just glides to everything. Yeah. And it, it's and crazy. And his, and his closing speed and everything. It's like every time I see a ball in the gap, I'm like, oh, he's gonna dive, and he never has to. He's like under <laughs> it. Sometimes he he runs past it. Yeah, like, like the it? like the Acuna ball in the playoffs last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that is not an easy catch, and he just yeah. kind of made it look routine. I mean, yeah. I think he went 102 feet for that towards a wall that juts out too. That's yeah. very – I think, obviously, expected, expected batting average can be a little bit misleading sometimes. But I want to say – I think I said this to you before, Drew. It was higher than the home run that Hoffman gave up to Riley in game two in that series. So, yeah, 
just happened to be hit to the deepest part of the ballpark. But maybe that's just expecting bad, expect the batting average being a weird stat. But regardless, yeah. I mean, it was obviously it was still hit well off of Kimbrel. Yeah, and we're coming up on an hour here. I think this is going to be kind of a good time to wind down a little bit. But I mean, Nathan, would you feel okay if we had to play the Braves in the first round of the playoffs again? <laughs> How can you not at this point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels inevitable. So I, I was just want them to fast forward the, you know, season to the Phillies, Braves, and LDS. But yeah, I mean, at some point you think it's going to run out, but I, I'm not sure they're that much worse than the Braves. They're, they're really not. I mean, especially no. in the playoffs, the yeah. Braves, like their rota- their rotation's good whenever Strider's in there, but they're not yeah. anywhere near what the Phillies are in the playoffs. I mean. Ranger Suarez is a bona fide ace whenever it comes playoff time. Yeah. There's just really no question about it. And, and they've honestly, I mean, they've hunted Max Freed too. Like he does not scare yeah. me in a playoff game, to be honest. No. It's crazy that he like gets the numbers he gets to because I just don't see it. I mean, if he's gonna throw 98 like he was there against us the other day, which <laughs> does true. he do that all the time or am I am I crazy? <laughs> I don't I think can't. Freed I don't, I don't think Freed throws 98, 99. Yeah. But either way, I mean they're they're a good rotation, but they're just not what the Phillies are in the playoffs, ultimately. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I, oh, I, I think it. if that's all we got, then I think it's a good time to close it out. Yeah, Nathan, thank you so much for hopping on. I have your socials in the description, so if you guys want, go follow Nathan on Twitter. Go follow him on TikTok, especially, um, and follow Phillies Nation too. They're doing great coverage over there. A lot of great stories and a lot of cool nuggets dropping every single day. Um, they might have stories that other beat reporters don't. So keep an eye out for them. Nathan might have some some stories that other or other beat reporters don't too. Um, and they've also got a podcast over there too that they do. And yeah, definitely check them out. Nathan, anyone, anything you want to say, anything you want to promote before we sign off here? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it all. I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm excited for the Phillies to come out West. I won't be in San Diego. I will be in Anaheim and San Francisco and Colorado. So that over the next couple of months. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on. Love, love what you guys are doing with the pod. Great stuff as always. Um, yeah, the Rockies and White Sox, two really fun teams to watch. <laughs> gotta win, gotta win these next four games. I mean, there's no, no excuse. These are yeah. terrible teams. So, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, everybody we'll have you on again to check in for sure. Sweet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody, everybody enjoy the the rest of the night. You know, a couple more easy games here coming up. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody have a great night. Yeah. God bless you guys. Peace out. Have a good one, y'all.